Okay, so now we have uh, the next uh, invited talk by Professor uh, uh, Vigantas uh, Mizekis. And uh, the topic of the presentation is uh, femtosecond laser printing of uh, form biofringent polymeric nanostructures. And uh, so let us listen to the biography of the speaker from uh, Daniel. Absolutely. So Professor Vikantas Mizekis is a professor at the Department of Engineering and Research Institute of Electronics in Shizuoka University, Japan. He was born and raised in Lithuania, where he received his PhD degree in physics from Vilnius University in 1997. And since 2000, he has been working at various universities in Japan. His scientific research is focused on 3D micro and nano fabrication of materials using femtosecond laser pulses and application, applications of laser patterning structures in micro optics, micro mechanics, and related areas. Okay, thank you very much, Daniel. So now let us welcome our invited speaker, Professor Vaigantas, to give his invited talk. Okay, thank you. And um, can everyone hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. So while I'm beginning to share my screen, I want to ask what is the time allocated purely for the talk? Is it still 11.40 and we have five minutes for discussion later? Yes, you're right. Okay, so um, okay, I will try to be reasonably fast. And today I will tell you a story about uh, form biofringence of um, uh, structures, polymeric nanostructures that are built using uh, femtosecond laser printing or direct laser writing technique. And um, before I start, I would like to acknowledge first um, uh, my uh, collaborators. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, my master student, uh, uh, Shota Rada, who just uh, has successfully graduated from master course. And also um, Masha Kretkovsky from our university, but another group. He has helped a lot with um, different uh, issues and provided ideas about fabrication processes. And uh, two guys from uh, uh, Vilnius University who were very often visiting me uh, during uh, recent years, except for the uh, uh, epidemic years, three years, recent years. Uh, they contributed also to different measurements. And also, I have received financial support by the GST Crest grant uh, from Japan. Uh, so, uh, with that, um, let me start that, uh, like many other uh, researchers here, we are doing femtosecond laser printing of different structures, and I guess I do not need to explain much of the basics here. Uh, we use uh, Fox laser beam, we draw different patterns in um, photosensitive resist, and we can obtain really fine uh, op um, exposure patterns and convert them into uh, dielectric patterns uh, uh, with high spatial resolution and uh, low uh, feature size. And uh, of course, as uh, previous speakers already have demonstrated, you can use this technique simply as a um, advanced 3D printer, but very high resolution. But mainly we are um, uh, interested in photonic structures, uh, for example, photonic crystals uh, and uh, uh, metamaterials. And uh, in partic particular focus of our study is this structure, so-called Woodpal uh, photonic crystal structure. And uh, during our work, uh, probably quite a long time ago, already maybe six or seven years ago, we noticed uh, that um, these structures exhibit uh, optical birefringence. And how did we notice that? Uh, very often we have um, examined uh, these structures under the microscope uh, uh, placed between two cross linear polarizers. So as you probably know, if um, there is nothing between the polarizers, then transmission of two cross polarizers is zero and detector or camera will not see anything. But if there is a, an object inserted between them, which can modify uh, polarization state of the light passing through it, uh, then uh, we can see some signal, and uh, this approach is used, for instance, to image um, 
by reflux engines in uh, polymers due to due to a mechanical stress and so on. And uh, we have also noticed that in our photon crystal structures, you can see one example shown here. Yes, so some structures fabricated on the glass substrate and the green illumination, and then the, uh, between two polarizers exhibit different brightness, yes, when uh, orientation is different, whereas uh, uniform blocks uh, of the same uh, material do not exhibit any brightness change. And if you look carefully here, there are some dates printed on these structures, and you can see something like 2018 and uh, May. Uh, so like six or seven years, we started noticing some things, um, uh, some interesting things. And because uh, structured samples have birefringence and the non-structured material has no birefringence, then we must assume that uh, uh, this is a structural birefringence coming from the uh, periodic structure existing inside the samples. And to make a longer story a little shorter, um, I can say that uh, this is called form by birefringence, and it occurs due to some unintentional structural asymmetry in our samples. So if we look in detailed picture uh, images of our structures, although they look pretty symmetrical, still you will, we will notice some uh, differences, um, small differences between lattice periods existing horizontal, along horizontal and vertical directions, and also lines are not have, do not have exactly the same thickness. So we have small unintentional structure uh, asymmetry and this asymmetry leads basically to uh, birefringence and um, you can also notice that in particular these photonic crystals that have wood pile structure they look like a combination of two cross gratings and uh, the single uh, grating made of the electric is probably the simplest uh, um, form by the Fringian structure. It consists of some dielectric walls separated by gaps of air, and we can uh, describe the structure by its um, duty cycle, which is defined as wall width by, um, divided by the period of the grating. Also, uh, grating height is important. And what happens here when the light is incident on the grating is that, uh, as in all birefringent materials, it is decomposed into two normal modes, uh, fast wave and slow wave. The slow axis of the grating is vertical. And um, while it um, like propagates through a structure, uh, some phase retardation between fast and slow waves develop and after the waves leave the structure and become combined again, we have modified um, state of the polarization in, in this uh, in the structure. Uh, so this is how single grating works. And uh, this um, form by the refringence of the grating is well known, well studied, and uh, we can refer to this article, for example, which uh, shows that uh, filling factor duty cycle is the most important parameter here. And when this factor is about half, we have about um, um, uh, 0 0.10 uh, by refringence. So you can figure out that in order to create full wave retardance, we need about 10 wavelengths here, yeah, about 10 wavelengths. And uh, actually quite a lot of um, applications using direct uh, laser writing or uh, laser printing, trying to exploit form by refringence were based on basically just uh, mimicking, reproducing this kind of one dimensional structure. One example can be um, a Q plate device. Uh, I will not explain and not try to explain uh, what they do, uh, but basically we can say that they consist of um, uh, several gratings that have different orientations of their slow or fast axis. And uh, for the functioning of this grating, it's important uh, that the grating must be sub wavelength, so uh, period is shorter than the incident wavelength. And uh, typically we need uh, high phase retardation, about half of wavelength is necessary in order to rotate polarization by 90 degrees, basically. So this is how what is necessary uh, for this structure. And uh, 
there were attempts to, to fabricate such structures, uh, quite successful, I would say, but never it was possible to extend height of these gratings to sufficient height so that uh, um, sufficient um, uh, uh, face retardation is created in the structures. These structures have um, low uh, retardation. If we try to simply stack multiple gratings, what happens is that um, they become too tall, uh, and the aspect ratio is too high and they become mechanically unstable. They fall fall down, collapse, and um, the structure becomes something like this, I suppose. Something like this. Uh, so um, this is a little bit exaggerated structure uh, picture, but I guess you understand the idea. So um, we tried to increase height of the structure, but at the same time, keep it mechanically stable. And so we can achieve high phase retardation in our single grating. We only focus on one single grating at this point. Uh, so how to do it? Uh, our idea is very simple. We simply construct three-dimensional structure and three-dimensional structures, photonic crystals, they're self-supporting and they can be printed to have very large height. And we deliberately introduce um, uh, uh, structural anisotropy as big as possible. So to create strong optical uh, uh, birefringence. And um, another important uh, component uh, for us was to be able to determine, to measure the um, birefringence. And we used this device called photoelastic modulator. We found some discarded device uh, and it enabled us to investigate our um, photonic crystals in more details. Um, uh, measure their retardance precisely. And we have been doing this basically fabricate, printing different structures, uh, simulating their properties and, and measuring for last uh, few years. Uh, initially, progress was slow, but um, uh, later we started to understand basically what is happening and we achieved good results, I think. So once again, what is the basic idea here? Uh, we First, let's consider two crossed gratings. For example, this grating is vertically oriented and its slow axis is vertical. And another grating, which for simplicity is shown here detached simply, um, is um, crossed with respect to the first one, and it has slow axis along the uh, horizontal directions. So if two gratings are the same, then their perpendicular orientations mean that their uh, phase retardations are opposite and retardance of the pair will be zero. But if we make them deliberately different, for example, different, having different thickness of the, the electric rods or different uh, duty cycle, then we can uh, make this um, pair to have non-zero retardance. And um, uh, without loss of generality, we can merge these uh, layers together, partially overlap them, uh, resulting in um, two-layer and then later in multi-layer structure, basically wood pile photonic crystal, which, if we are lucky and know what, what we're doing, can have a large retardance, exhibit large retardance, and still stay mechanically stable. Uh, so, of course, in, uh, in, in a three-dimensional structure, things are not as simple, layers and gratings interact together. And so in order to really design our structures, we used FDTD simulations, which again, simulate transmission experiment and allow us to find phase retardation between the horizontal and vertically polarized components passing through the structure. Uh, we, for instance, we can successfully reproduce this benchmark result shown in the previous article using our simulations. You can see these points. We can uh, gain insight, uh, insight into the uh, uh, spectral dispersion of retardance and also transmission in various orders of the uh, diffracted beam or transmitted beam. Uh, so with these tools, we started then printing our structures, uh, properly designing them. Um, I uh, emphasize here again, different parameters of these structures along X and Y axis directions. 
And uh, we also allowed them to shrink freely uh, by putting them um, uh, on some kind of supporting structures or head cages in the structures. And uh, normally, even we uh, uh, simulated the structures, we still used, okay, so sorry, we used uh, this photoresistor Z2080, which you are quite familiar with. And um, we also performed some parametric search of different parameters. Uh, changing um, uh, lattice periods, um, uh, lattice periods and power of the laser and so on. Um, so we achieved different conditions here, different retardances. And here you can see one such matrix of samples. Uh, they were fabricated using different conditions. You can notice different um, shrinkage, yes, along different directions. And um, numbers on each structure also show the measured retardance. I will tell you about retardance a little later at the helium neon laser wavelength. You can see it's quite high. Yes, we can see several candidates which have half of the wavelength retardance. Yes, and uh, this one is close to quarter wavelength. So uh, you can see now detailed structure, uh, uh, some images of the samples. White numbers here show um, uh, design parameters. Yellow numbers show the uh, actual parameters after the shrinkage. And um, you can notice a symmetry in these structures. Um, Another example of a sample here, um, encaged, so freely fallen down on the surface of supporting substrate. So this one has a little bit uh, higher asymmetry. But um, again, um, all these samples can be printed to large height. We can increase that height. And uh, the retardance is um, uh, quarter wavelength, half wavelength, and wavelength and higher. So um, we have... Uh, Quantitatively, uh, quantitatively measured the uh, retardance using this setup um, with photoelastic modulator and sample put together between two cross polarizers. And then since um, PM um, retardance is modulated in time, we have some time dependent signal uh, for the laser beam, helium neon laser beam passing through the system. And from uh, frequency uh, components, the amplitudes and phases at fundamental and uh, double frequency, we can determine um, uh, retardance using this methodology shown here. Uh, so uh, if we know what we're doing, we can, for example, um, optimize our structural parameters and uh, by increasing number of layers, achieve almost linear increase in the uh, uh, retardance, um, uh, almost reaching half wavelength, yes, in this case. Uh, FDTD simulations represent um, experimental data very well, reproduced very well, even some scattering is visible, is visible here, and scattering uh, results from some dispersion. We have some dispersion here, and unfortunately, some um, strong variations at some wavelengths, but at some wavelengths, these variations are smooth, and at least we can find some areas in the wavelength range which can be used for practical applications. So, uh, now we can increase thickness of structure like that and achieve the retardance that we want. Okay, now let's see whether our structures can be used as quarter wave and uh, half wave plates. Here we have some um, experimental data showing the polarization state of laser incident of our structure. Not perfectly aligned here, a little bit incidence direction uh, polarization is different from 45 degrees. This is polarization state in a polar uh, representation of the laser, which passed nominally a quarter wave structure, and uh, it exhibits linear polarization rate significantly decreased towards the circular state. And when we pass through the half wavelength structure, we have linear polarization, but rotated not exactly at 90 degrees. Polarization rate is high. Polarization degree of linear polarization in the structure is quite high, as you can notice. No significant decrease. What happened here is that uh, obviously we have, um, if we have, for example, incident uh, radiation polarized at 45 degrees, then if after uh, passing the structure, both um, uh, components, horizontally and vertically polarized, have the same amplitudes, then we have rotation by 90 degrees as it should be. 
But if these two components are slightly different due to some reasons, like dichroism in the structure, some diffraction and so on, then we have some disbalance here. And uh, although uh, um, rotation angles are different from 90 degrees, not like an ordinary wave plate, a quarter wave plate, but um, uh, polarization rate still remains high. So we have a high purity of linear polarization. Uh, we should not be so happy, though. Uh, transmission of structures is still low. We are working on increasing this by using different uh, fabrication parameters. And one might also think about using generally subdiffraction structures in which all gratings are subwavelength. In our case, one grating only plays role role of support, and it's not subwavelength. So we have some weak diffracted light. And um, uh, probably I do not have so much time to explain all the details here, but according to our uh, simulations, at least, it seems that this is not a good solution. Some near subwavelength structures work best because in this case, we can achieve transmission of the structure, which is high, close to 100%, and um, retardance can be high still. And we do not have any uh, fast oscillation in the retardance. In two-dimensional structures, three-dimensional structures, situation is different from one-dimensional gratings, and we can have um, uh, rapid oscillations of retardance even in truly subdiffractive uh, uh, subwavelength uh, grating mode here at long wavelengths. This happens because at some wavelengths we have obviously some resonances in photonic crystal structures. Okay, this plot shows uh, the uh, polarization ellipses. In calculated data, we can uh, deduce polarization ellipses, which look different from the polarization patterns that we can measure intensity patterns. Okay, so um, almost time to finish. And uh, uh, as a conclusion, I can say that we made some uh, prototype of material which can be used to make super, super compact and self-supporting birefringent structures, um, uh, possibly leading to functional applications and can be used, um, uh, well suited for use in spatially variant structures such as the few plates that I showed before. And another interesting thing that I want to stress again that um, in three-dimensional case, there is no meaning to go to fully sub-wavelength structures. We can have only, I think, nearly sub-wavelength structures perform better than fully uh, sub-wavelength structures. Okay, so I think that is all um, uh, for, 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 for me, and I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Professor Vaigantas, for this very nice presentation. So I have a question on uh, the Q plate, which you showed uh, in one of the slides. Yes. So, yeah, what is the maximum area that can be fabricated? I mean, for this uh, Q plate. Um, okay, we do not go for largest uh, areas. I think this uh, area is limited by the by the by the time that you have for fabrication and by the speed of your uh, optomechanics that uh, can be used. We 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 use relatively. Uh, slow, um, uh, slow, slow, slow equipment. So for us, um, it would take to if we okay if we consider a structure which has diameter of one hundred microns, for example. Yes, Q plate. It would take probably like um, one hour or so. If retardation is high, we don't need many layers in the structure. Yes, so. But if we want to fabricate really macroscopic structures, which can be inserted into non-focused Gaussian beams and used for generation of um, different uh, um, exotic uh, polarization states, then surely we would need a larger time, larger, longer time of fabrication. However, in our in our group, we do not focus on very large structures. I think we would probably try to find applications as very small structures, possibly inserted into waveguides or fabricated on top of waveguides, optical fibers, and so on. OK, thank you very much. So in, in our lab, we are trying to make uh, this polarization-dependent devices. And uh, we are looking into like uh, making devices that will have a size of uh, 5 millimeters by 5 millimeters. So in that case, is it feasible using your uh, fabrication technique? Or how long in will it take? Yes. In principle, yes, but uh, probably uh, 
probably yes five by five is i don't know we never tried that but it, it might take a long time and if you fail then you have to, to, to repeat the procedure again so uh i think uh, uh, this this is probably technical detail i think uh, we, we do not use fast beam scanning for lateral drawing using gulva no scanners uh, we use fully mechanical stage, so that would take longer time for us, yes. But I think uh, other groups, uh, other people who use um, uh, fast scanners, they can do this at uh, much faster speed, yeah. So I think it's feasible, yes. Okay, thank you very much. So let us see if there are any further questions from the audience. Okay, so there is a question from Professor Mangirdas. Hello, uh, very interesting. And uh, my question would be related to your third conclusion that you foresee that uh, these abwellent structures can be better candidates if we are not uh, really on the edge of a resolution, yes, of a dimensions. So to, yes. to make them uh, mm -hmm. around uh, wavelength or so. But if you don't go for smaller dimensions, uh, then your uh, amount of periods, yes, the, the, the lattice elements is also uh, decreased in some certain area of volume, yes? So you need to make a bigger structure. No, no, the second grating actually, which uh, I think uh, this conclusion that uh, I gave previously, let's say if we look uh, maybe more into some concrete examples here, it means that we can simply keep this 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 grating along the um, well um, vertical oriented lines yes they do not play significant role in uh, controlling by refringence of the structure of phase retardation so this can be kept quite large but however if it is too large then we will have some diffracted beams propagating after the structure. So that's also not, not a good solution, uh, significant losses. So uh, there is some intermediate regime uh, where uh, we are close to sub-wavelength, but not precisely. For instance, here in this structure, that um, uh, horizontal lattice period is 0 0.75 micrometers. And uh, as you can see, we have pretty nice result, the high transmission here, yes, and depending on the thickness of the structure and number of layers, we can have almost uh, dispersion layers or low dispersion uh, of retardance, yes, so this region is quite nice. And we have also checked in our structures and in, uh, for similar parameters, you already almost do not observe significant propagating diffracted beams after the structure. So I think that is somewhere close to optimum, but of course, this this, this is not a final conclusion. Might might be we might need some little bit more investigations. Okay, but it was meant in Z the direction, yes, in Z coordinate, not in X and Y. It's an X and Y, yes, yes. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, Z axis coordinate. Uh, parameter here, the period is, is, uh, is 0 0.35 micrometers in all our samples, absolutely. I think there is no significant difference between the results uh, if we change this uh, lattice period, really. Uh, this is uh, basically, well, there, should, there could be some variation, but it's, it's not that strong. We're speaking here about three-dimensional structure, uh, fully self-supporting and highly porous structure. So what I told before is I, I said that there's no meaning to make AX and AY both uh, shorter than the wave incident wavelength. Only one is enough. Okay, so it's, it can be balanced. Good, interesting, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. So let us see if there are any further questions from the audience. I think in chat, Saulus wrote a question. Okay. okay, I think uh, <laughs> he is uh, now next to me, so I should chat to him directly. But uh, please tell me what was his question. Okay, so he has asked a question on, say, can random support structures be performing better than periodic? Uh, random support structures? Yeah, not to have grating. Uh, what do you mean? You need grating to not to have grating is not allowed. If you if you don't have grating, you have no birefringence. But suppose structure which is making grating tall can be um, 
more, more complicated and in, in a way random so can it ah no 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 i think uh, that's uh I, I know okay uh, support structures some additional elements which keep uh yes. yeah yeah some okay I, I know what you mean now uh some people tried to, okay some people who are sitting in my room now tried to do some structures which um, basically are supported by disks yes and uh, fabricating uh, uh, gratings on both sides of the disks uh, we have tried something similar and the result was something similar there is no improvement actually and uh, and uh, you, you can only have uh, up to several layers there's no no any improvement uh, uh, eventually and uh, if you have such supporting structures size total thickness of the structure will be tens of microns uh tens of microns whereas active thickness will be like few micrometers only in our case that entire structure uh let's say if we if i'm still permitted to go here you can see here this entire structure has nine or ten microns thickness and it's this is nearly half wavelength so um i think it's much better we can we can squeeze it anywhere we can squeeze it between the you know eyes of a uh, uh, microbe yes make some bio birefringent glasses or some e yeah okay thank you okay so thank you very much so now uh, okay. since we are almost uh, i mean we exceeded the time so let us thank the invited speaker once again for his uh, valuable presentation and if you have further questions so you can also contact him through his uh, email or uh, you can post it in chat we can send it to him and get his reply